report so you can get back to candidates um, after the fact. So we're all very happy um, that you all are participating in the NC Tech Virtual Tech Job Expo in two weeks. Um, the early access starts on the 28th. And one last thing before I hand it over to Jordan so she can get started. Jordan. If you are a job seeker, please feel free to stay for this session. You will learn a lot here. We're also having a separate session specifically for job seekers, and I will put that in the chat if you want to register for that. That will be next Friday, September 30th, I believe at noon, but that, that will be in the, in the link and you can register for that as well. That's specific for job seekers. So with that, Jordan, I'll turn it over to you to walk our employers through setting up their booth. Wonderful. And I'm sorry, I'm having a tough time with my camera today. I'm not sure what's going on. I just try to turn it on and it just keeps freezing. So I want to be able to move through this training without it freezing on me. Um, so I'll, I'll try to turn my camera on at some point and we'll see if that, if that works. That's fine. <laughs> but... I will probably turn mine off too. So I'm not the only one on camera. Okay. Um, I will try and watch the chat if you have questions. And then if there are questions for NC Tech, I will answer at the end. And if they're for Jordan and Premier Virtual, I will let her handle. Thanks, Jordan. Absolutely. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Let me just make sure my screen is sharing here. Okay, perfect. Um, again, my name is Jordan Ambers. I'm one of the client success managers here at Premier Virtual. And today we're going to be walking you through uh, the Premier Virtual platform, just showing you how all of um, the platform works and um, a couple of different tips and tricks and tools um, on how to use the system. So first thing that we're going to overview is the registration page. And I know most of you have probably already registered, um, but we will just overview this just in case for those who may not have registered already or for who anybody who is new um, to the system. So first thing, you should have received the registration page available here. So when you do um, click into the registration link, it'll open up just like this for you to view the information about the event. And then also on the right-hand side is uh, provided the schedule. Now, early access, what that means um, is that the lobby is actually going to open up on the 28th. So the attendees will be able to view your booths and any jobs that you may have available. Um, all your booth information will be available to them and they'll also be able to um, provide um, their resumes to the jobs that they may be interested in. So you wanna make sure that your booth uh, information is available by that time. So make sure that you know everything is entered in um, by the September 28th. Um, now you also have the early access countdown clock. So this is just gonna let you know um, up until you know the early access time is available, how many days, hours, minutes, seconds are available until early access is uh, available to the attended, to the attendees. And to start your registration, you'll select register for event. Now during the authentication here, you'll have two options. First is to sign in. So if you have um, participated in the platform before, you will be able to use that same booth that you have used in the past. So you can click uh, sign in here and provide your username and password, or you can click into register as organization if you're registering brand new. Now I do have an organization um, already to kind of show you all. So I'm just going to sign in here. Um, and whether you are signing into a new booth or not, it is going to give you um, the organization setup wizard for you to move through the basic steps on either um, editing your booth that you already have created or um, into creating the, your uh, virtual booth. So you'll have seven different steps here. First one is going to be entering your organization name and contact information. So your employer name will go here or organization name will go here. And any person, the person of contact that um, the host or myself needs to get in contact with at any point in time, if we do need to contact your organization, that information is going to go here in step one. So even if you are the person who's registering the booth to the event, but you're not necessarily the contact person, we do need that contact person's information. So email address, phone number, and first and last name. 
and then just the location of where your organization is. So if I go ahead and type that in, it should open up for me. And then I'll provide my zip code and move on to step two. So step two is going to be providing your logo. So if you have that saved on your desktop, um, you know, cell phone, um, tablet or iPad, we're accessible from all, you know, smart devices. Make sure you do have your logo saved because you'll go into change or upload here. And when you access your pictures folder, um, you want to make sure that you have a picture downloaded so you can easily just click into it and then it will open up here. Um, we do have a zoom function. So if your image appears to be smaller, you can zoom in, or if it appears to be larger, you can zoom out to make sure it fits in that area. And then you can also crop your image in any way that you may want to in that section as well. Step number three will be the about us or overview section. So you can add text information. Um, you can also add hyperlinks in this section as well as pictures. Now, if you do want to add pictures, it is going to require an image URL, um, but you'll need to right click the image that you would like to apply here and copy the image web address to provide that, um, provide images in this section. Step number four is adding your website and any social media links you would like to appear on your booth. So the first uh, given text box here is going to be your direct website. And then if you have LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or Twitter for your organization, you want to add that as well. Um, those text boxes are provided. Now they're not mandatory. So if you do not want to provide them, that's fine. Um, or if you want to provide certain ones, that's fine as well. At the very bottom, there are um, additional three links that you can add into your virtual booth. These are custom links, so you can add any three links of your choice, uh, whether that's directly linking to your careers page or additional <laughs> resource information. Um, you can add that as well. Sure, here, everyone. Okay, it's on mute. All right. All right, and step five will be adding your additional recruiters. So as I mentioned before, we just need one person to register the booth uh, to the event. Now, just having that, uh, that one singular person registering the booth to the event doesn't mean that that person is the only one that's going to be um, a part of that booth. So it is their job to add the additional users to that booth. Um, so we just need, you know, one company so we don't have duplicate booths. So make sure you are in communication, um, you know, with your team of whoever is going to be registering to the event that they add everybody else to that booth. And that will be available here under the uh, recruiter step here. By clicking on to add new users, you can provide their first and last name. Their email address will be their username. There are three um, different user access roles in the platform, as well as manually setting the password. So when you are adding your users, I do recommend manually setting the password so that they directly receive the information from you. If not, you are going to rely on our system to um, to automate that message for them to send off. And most of the time it does fall into spam because depending on what the email address uh, domain is, it could be thrown into spam or it could be directly uh, blocked our automated email. So I do recommend that you manually set the password and then just send them uh, an email with their usernames and passwords so that they can directly uh, receive that from you and log in with ease. We do not have um, any limit on how many organization users there can be within your account. So you can add as many as you'd like. Step number six will be adding the job postings. So you can click on to add new job posting, select um, the job title, which is going to be a way for your candidates or attendees to map uh, where they're searching for jobs. So let me just give you an example here. We have provided a new feature within the platform. Uh, it's a search function. So your candidates or attendees can click into job category and view, um, you know, depending on what has been provided, they can view jobs within that area. Um, they can also view specific job titles and lo locations of where jobs are available. Now, what is um, needed of you all 
is even if you do have a booth already or if you're just signing up, make sure to be able to map the job title. So we do have titles available in the platform. It may not be directly linked with the unique job title that you have. So let's say, for example, we have customer service, right? We have a lot of different customer services here. However, your unique job title may be um, you know, happy smiles, customer service representative. That may be the job title that you have available. But what we have in the system is customer service agent, customer service rep, um, you know, customer service advocate. So you want to be able to map that with the job category that we have available in the system so that when your attendees are searching, um, you know, for particular job titles, they'll be able to accurately search it. It's just a way of mapping. So right here in the job title, we need for you to go ahead and um, attach that with whatever you have available. So if you have an accountant, you know, job, just type that in and you can see that we have a lot of different available um, uh, job categories or titles for that. And you can still provide exactly what your job title is uh, within the system as well. We just needed to, to be able for um, your candidates to search that category and have it um, have it directly map with whatever unique job title that you have available. Does anybody have any questions on that? This is a new feature, so I want to make sure that it is um, you know received and everybody understands. Okay. Um, next step within a job uh, with providing your job information will be the description. So you can copy and paste that information directly into the, the description box here. You can also um, review what you have added in this section. If you need to go ahead and edit it, you can click on the edit icon and revise any information that you need to. If not, you can just review what you have provided and select complete to finish the job um, posting in your booth. Last step is going to be the booth setup. So you can click into edit booth here. It'll open up for you. Um, you can choose a bunch of different booth backgrounds uh, depending on, on what's available. Um, if you are looking for conference room type booth backgrounds, you can do that. If you select a particular background, there will be different avatars available. But the first available option is to not have an avatar. So if you're not looking for one, you can just select the first available option and there will not be an avatar present. This logo section here is just to show you where your logo placement will be. So it's not going to actually display your logo. I know this is a little misleading here. Um, a lot of people are, um, you know, they, they do ask, I did, you know, upload my logo, where is it? This is just going to show you where the logo placement should be. And when you have found a booth background, select confirm here at the bottom and then complete registration and your registration will be complete. Before we move forward, do, does anyone have any questions with registration or did anybody have any trouble uh, with registering to the event? Okay, um, now you can always access back into uh, the platform with the registration link. So if you refer back to your email that you received, you can always refer back to um, logging into your account with the registration link. Now you will not need to select register for event. You'll just select in the top right corner, log in, and then you can use your username and password to get right into your account. Now what's first going to be available to you is the dashboard. And this is just a um, quick way of getting to all of your settings. Um, you can get to your organization overview, your booth background, frequently, I'm sorry, frequently asked questions and answers, and then also video tutorials, your profile, as well as user guides. Now, a way to get to all of that is going to be through my organization and also training here. It's going to provide you all the tutorials um, and user guides, frequently asked questions, as well as um, the chat for IT and tech support. Now, underneath my, or, my organization, if you do need to edit your general information, you want to select edit organization here. It's going to allow you to, um, to edit your logo, your name, the main point of contacts, email address, bio section, address, 
phone number, and social media and website links. The users tab is going to provide you with every user um, within the account. If you are an administrator, you can add and remove users. That's pretty much the biggest um, user access that you have over the other two um, user roles here. Editors, they are able to edit all information in the account, but they cannot add or remove users. And representatives are a view only role. So they cannot make any changes at all. Um, they can just view the information that's provided. Job postings provides all of your jobs. And if you do need to go ahead and add or edit or delete, you do have those three options here. And the boots tab allows you to review the three custom links or add those in this section. If you do need to change your background, that's also available. And at the bottom right, you have view as attendee. So this is going to open up for you so you can see exactly what your booth looks like to the attendees in the event. Um, you wanna click into your icons to make sure everything looks the way you want it to. Um, your jobs as well, the descriptions, how they read. If you do have any custom links, you do wanna click on those to make sure they're routing to the correct web addresses. Um, sometimes I have seen that, you know, uh, the recruiters will add their their links here and come event day, they get a 404 message. So make sure that you do, you know, just review those links and make sure they're routing to the correct areas you want them to. My profile is your personal user profile. So if you need to go in and edit this information, select in the top right edit profile. You can add a photo of yourself if you'd like. Um, there's also a way to edit your password, add your um, address and phone number information. Nothing here is going to be visible besides your profile photo and your first and last name to the attendees. Um, and of course, if you do add yourself to be a military veteran, active duty, guard, or reservist, you can identify yourself as such. So I'll show you here. If you do identify as yes, uh, there will be an American flag that appears right next to your avatar photo. So you can be identified as well as the uh, attendees you have in the event. They can also identify themselves as veterans. Um, so if you do see an American flag next to their profile or next to their avatar, um, that's just letting you know that um, that individual is a veteran. The quick reply section here allows you to add any quick reply messages that you may um, want to save as um, as uh, saved responses. So if you do want to make sure you have a greeting saved or um, any particular response or passage that you wanna make sure you can easily just click and send out to attendees that you're chatting with, this is the area to do so. So for example, I do have a greeting in here. Um, you know, if I plan on doing video chat, I have that available. You definitely want to ask any attendees if they're available for video chat before you send them the invite, only because you can't assume that they have the equipment for a video chat. Um, so you always want to ask. So that's a good uh, response to have as well. And then any way for them to follow up with follow up with you if you would like them to do so. You want to include, um, you know, maybe contact information or anything like that. You want to also save that as a quick response. As you can see, there's uh, there's no limit on how many quick responses you can have. And you'll just select on the new message icon, type in your custom message, and then select save changes. If anyone have any questions on our My Organization section, profile, or the training? All right, perfect. Now, um, to get to your event, you wanna select the events tab and you're gonna view uh, the event that you have registered to. So it's gonna be listed here. And when you click into it, uh, depending on how you view your events, if you view it from the event card view, you'll select access booth and it's going to take you right in. If you view it from a list view, you're going to need to select the actions arrow and then select access booth in the top right. Now what's going to be available to you here while you're in your booth, you do have a booth preview. So if you wanna take a look again at what your booth looks like, or if you want to help navigate an attendee to a part of your booth, you can open your booth up to make sure you're telling them um, you know, where something is in your booth. In the bottom, you have the visitors tab. You also have submitted resumes and schedule. So visitors is going to show you um, at 
active visitors. So these are going to be attendees that are currently in your booth right now. If not, you can select active and it's going to turn to the show all tab, which is also going to show you any attendees that have come to your booth. I would recommend working off of the show all tab so that way you don't miss a single person. Any active uh, visitors are going to be located here um, as well as um, any visitors that have come by. So you won't miss a single person in the show all tab. You can also filter out if you just want to view veterans. Um, you can filter by work experience as well um, and by location. So if you're looking you know, to view individuals from a certain location or work experience, you do have that filter option. Now, um, next to their name, you'll see their work experience, you'll see their location, and then you also have action items here. The first one available is going to be their profile. So if you click into it, you can open it up. Um, if this person is not available in your booth at that moment, so if they're not active, you can invite them back to your booth. You can view their resume and work experience out of their profile as well. If you would like to chat with them, you want to select the little chat button, and it's going to take you right into a chat conversation with them. At the very bottom, you'll see select preset message. So if you do have any preset messages or quick reply saved in your profile, you can easily drop those right into your chat conversation. Um, if you're viewing the conversation at the very top, there are a few action items here as well. So same thing, this is the profile view. Um, this is the visibility view. So if your conversation is over and you would like to pretty much make it invisible, um, not receive any notifications from um, that person or put the chat at the very bottom, we did not want to provide a delete option for conversations that are over because we do save your chat conversations so you can review them later. So we've just provided kind of an, in, um, you know, a visibility option for you. So if you do want to put that conversation at the very bottom of all of your other chats because it's over, you can select that. Um, there's also a video option. So if you do want to do a one-on-one -on -one call with those individuals, you can do that. So it's going to open up for you. Yeah, my, I don't know why, but my camera is not working. So, um, but you can select the video convert, the video one-on-one -on -one to submit a one-on-one -on -one call with that individual. You can also use video conference that will allow you to do a group call or webinar presentation during the event. And how that works is you'll just select the conference type that you would like. So let's say we want group call, we'll select next, and we're going to select start now. Presenters are the other users of your booth. So if you do want kind of a co-presenter um, available to you in your group uh, video, you can select one or all of your users of the booth. If not, you can completely skip step three and go right into the, att the attendees list. So any attendee that has visited your booth will be available here and you can invite them into that group conversation. So I know there's only just me listed here, but if there were multiple, you can select every single person and it's going to be just like, um, you know, how we have here on Zoom. You can see everybody, um, everyone's able to interact through their video or through their microphone or through text chat. So let me see if I can get this to work here. Yep, no, my camera is still frozen. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, but once you have your attendees, they'll all be listed here. So you'll be able to see every single attendee. There is a chat function available. So if you want to welcome everyone, you can do that. Um, you can also record. So if you want to record the session that you're having, you can do that as well. If you would like to share your screen, See. Not sure which one. This is we'll do two, one. Okay, perfect. So you can share your screen. This is the attendee side of things. I did want to show you this anyway. Um, you can share your screen during the event as well. So if you have something to show them, uh, whether it's your website or a presentation of some sort. Uh, PowerPoint, you can share that. Um, when you're done sharing, you can just select stop sharing or you can click the share icon again. And there is a show participants section here. So you can see how many individuals are logged in with you. Um, any person that has a blue icon means that they're logged in. If they have a red icon, that means they are not present in that group call at the moment. 
So you also have an invite participants. So let's see, you know, in the attendees list, let's say you have, um, you know, additional individuals that join after you have started your group call, you can go back into the section and invite those attendees that have joined since you started. Or if you're looking at your um, participants list and you see, you know, Jordan hasn't connected yet, you can go ahead back into invite and you can send her the invitation again so that, you know, um, to make sure that she answers this time. <laughs> um, so as you can see on the attendee side of things, this is how they receive your uh, notifications. They get the little invitations uh, via notification. And if they want to join, they'll select join call there. Um, let me go ahead and stop sharing. So you can select stop sharing there. And once the, once the group call is done, you can select exit here. Now, the only difference between group call presentation is that presentation, you're not going to be able to see your attendees. So if you do want it to be more webinar style, well, they can only interact with you via text chat um, during your presentation, this is what you want to select. If you want it to be more kind of involved, um, you want to select group call here. Does anyone have any questions about one-on-one -on -one or video conferencing? In the top here, you do have a gears icon. This allows you to uh, change certain settings within the event. So there is a new message sound. So when you do receive a message uh, from an attendee, there is a audible notification. Um, when you receive a new visitor, visitor <laughs> there's also an audible notification. The quick reply messages section takes you right into your quick replies. So if you do need to add, edit, or remove any quick replies from your profile, you can do that from this area. Submitted resumes uh, list out any of the attendees that have submitted their resumes to any of your jobs. Um, it's going to show you their first and last name, email address. If you click their name, it's going to pop up, pop open their profile for you. Um, it's also going to list the job that they submitted their resume to and a link, um, I'm sorry, a download icon for you to download their, um, their resume. In the top right here, the chats column, you have my chats, which is going to show you the attendees that you are currently having conversations with. Show all is going to show you every conversation that's being held within your booth. So if you know you have 12 users in your booth, including yourself, every single conversation that's happening is going to be available for you to click into view, or if you need to take over for that person, you will have that capability. Now, after the event is over, you want to select the back icon. It's going to take you into your um, reporting. And I'm going to use a different event just to kind of showcase this so we have some information to view. Um, right here in booth activity, it's going to show you uh, the hours of the event and how, um, how much booth activity you received during those hours. And at the very bottom, it's going to show you the total amount of visits your booth received in that event how many registered attendees there are. So if you're ever curious or you want to make sure that your booth is staffed up enough, you can always click into this and view, um, you know, how many registered attendees there are, how it's growing. You do have a registration graph here that's going to show you kind of the, the spikes in registration on the attendee side. After the event, you'll have this information more filled out, how many resumes you received, um, if anybody was marked interview scheduled or hired, uh, your chat conversations, how many chat conversations there were within your booth, total messages that were sent back and forth, top uh, work experiences. So out of the individuals that came to visit your booth, what were their work backgrounds is basically what this graph is going to tell you. At the very bottom, you'll have top jobs. So your jobs will be listed here. Um, within this event, I didn't have any jobs available. So there's nothing uh, listed here for me, but you will have any jobs that were viewed and how many times they were viewed will be um, uh, numbered over here on the right. The second tab will be your visitors list. So every single attendee that viewed your booth, you will have access to their profile. So if we select the arrow here, Alexandria's profile will open up to us. If you want to invite them back to your booth, you can do that by selecting invite. Um, if they're logged into the platform, they will see that as a notification. If not, they're going to see it as an email. Um, but you want to make sure that, you know, the event is still open for them if you do that. 
Um, so if you go back to your registration page from here, the event is open and, oh, this is not, let me, and here, sorry about that. So the event is open um, October 5th, all the way until 2.30 p.m. So if you are going to invite individuals, you want to make sure you invite them up until 2.30 p.m. After that, they will not have the access to um, come back into the event. So when you are doing that, make sure, you know, you are inviting them during the time that they can come back. Um, all right, so you have your list here of visitors. Um, you have different ways of filtering this list. So if you wanna filter by email, phone number, experience, veteran or not veteran, um, locality, state, postal code, um, visit date, chats, how many chats they sent, how many applications they submitted, notes or rankings that you left on their profiles, you have all of that filtering here. Um, you also have visibility of the profile, again, by clicking on the action arrow. Last thing here, you have the reports tab. This is going to provide you with three different reports for you to view. Um, so you do have your visitors report, which is going to give you a list of all the attendees that came to visit your booth. You're also going to have the chats report, um, which is going to download all of the chat conversations that were held in your booth. So you'll be able to see your conversations as well as any other conversations that were held within, the, um, within your booth in the event. And lastly would be the resume. So you can download a zip folder that compiles all resumes um, of those who came to visit your booth. And that's pretty much it on the platform. Does anyone have any questions or would like for me to go to a specific part of the event um, for review? Or was there anything in the platform that you did not see today that you would like to see or have a question about? I see one person trying to connect to audio. So we'll wait just a second for her. If anyone does have a question after the fact, um, you should all have my email address. I also put it in the chat. If it's a specific question about the platform, you can email support at premiervirtual.com. Jordan, I hope that got that right. And Jordan just yep. put her email in the chat box as well. Um, Sarita, I see you continuing to try to connect to audio. If you can't connect, you can always put your question in the chat box. She just joined um, into the um, into the call, so um, she has a question. We will have this uh, recording posted up on our NC Tech website for the Tech Job Expo event. So if you do have questions and want to go back and refer to it. Or more importantly, if you want to share to other recruiters that are going to be in your booth so that they're not asking you all the questions the day of the event, um, encourage them to watch this so they have a good overview of how everything works um, and be ready to make the most of connecting with candidates that day. We do have about 18 companies registered. I think there's a total of 1,400 openings. Um, so hopefully we will have a really active day um, and look forward to the early access starting on the 28th and then the event starting at 8.30 on October 5th. So are there any other questions? I tried to fill some time so people could think of their questions. I think, I think we're all set. Jordan, thank you very much for walking through everything. And thanks to the, the Premier Virtual staff on the back end with some of the great updates. Um, and Sarah, I see your question. Um, if you will email me your email address or just send it in the chat real quick. Um, yes, I can resend that link to you. Um, and other than that, I think we're, we're good to wrap up. All right. Well, thank you everyone for participating. Um, you know, we look forward to seeing you on event day. And if you have any questions, please reach out to Andrea or myself. Thank you. Right. Thank, thank you. you.